Hello everybody and welcome back here to the Daily Creative Challenge in Adobe Illustrator. I'm your host Clady and I'm so happy to be here with you today for this second week. So I can see the wonderful chat on uh, the behance.net slash live. If you're watching from YouTube, make sure to head on behance so I can say hi to you and read your questions and answer answer your questions most importantly but also saying hi to the people that are already in chat wait helping us today also umacron motor void franco paul canclini good evening where are you from let me know where are you from susel wilson aaron i can see carol and uh, everybody already saying hello and hanging out in the chat before the stream i love this wonderful community this is really exciting. So today I'm going to show you right away what we're going to be working on as a, is a, I can, I can already say it's a fun challenge. Today is dedicated to all of you, us, everybody who thinks he can not draw. So today we're going to have fun. We're going to create and change some photos in order to make sure to create some very outstanding uh, assets and I'm going to jump real quick into the landing page. Let's see if there is any question in the chat before doing so. We have Switzerland in the house. We have Napa. Uh, Carol say, I love the print on your top. Well, I'm glad you do because it's sort of related to the kind of work that we're going to be doing today. It's going to be a lot of fun. Crystal Rodriguez, nice to see you. Uh, Lucas from Malaysia, wonderful. Right, so let's get going and... Uh, let's jump into my screen and head to the landing page for the creative challenges so here we are here um the best thing for you to do in order to make sure to participate and take part to these challenges uh we're going to be live until the 6th of august and there's going to be an encore session with more uh chance to take part to these challenges is of course to click on a big blue button in order to be reminded of the upcoming challenges then if you scroll down you will be able to actually discover the challenges that we will be ready done together so we created social media templates icon design photo postcards video call background newsletter and today we're gonna really edit our photos using Lightroom? No. Using Photoshop? No. We're going to be using Illustrator to create scroll stopping assets for your social media or anything you want. You can even, you know, go back and use this for your postcard as well. Today is all about fun, fun, fun. Using the pencil tool, type on a path, the appearance panel, and also we're going to uh, work a little bit with the width tool. So let me know in the chat if you think you cannot draw. I want to know how many confident people know like they say maybe talented they know you know what i'm a talented illustrator just let me know if you if you are someone who can draw or someone that doesn't know how to draw uh because uh, i really really love to see that my great grandmother was christina from denmark kimberly is saying that sounds really funny Right, so let's get started here. And uh, something else that I want to remind you is that every time that you join a challenge, you will have access to uh, a freebie because uh, those are the starter files. So in order to get to get the starter file, click on get started. And from here, you'll uh, land up on this landing page. You can simply click on the file or copy it to your work to copy to your uh, document cloud. And from there, we'll be able to open the file in Illustrator. So let's say what it says, uh, the chat. I can draw stick figure. It's been a while, Kingsley. Jessica, terrible drawer. Umacron, can draw. Uh, Don, I can make a straight line. Don't draw me into it mode. <laughs> that's really funny. Fantastic. I love that. So, you know, that's definitely the perfect show for you. And uh, I'm going to show you real quick what the transformation is going to be like. Um, and always say learning the basic of illustration. So the, to me, the basic is literally to have fun. Uh, of course, you know, I read a lot of books. I um, go through museum or just, you know, scroll through the internet and of course be hands. And actually, before we get started, I'm going to give you a little preview, uh, but then we're going to jump into Discord for those of you who haven't enjoyed Discord yet. Uh, but I'm going to show you first the image that we're going to be using. Here it is. So we're going to transform this photo, uh, which is a photo that I personally took at home while I was traveling um, in the south of Italy. So, uh, you know, 
everybody can post a photo like that. And uh, what I really want to show you to do is to go from this kind of photo, which imagine it can be on anybody's uh, Instagram feed to this, if it's going to appear, hopefully. So we're going to be creating um, a lot of fun, definitely a shocking scroll stopping image. Uh, we're going to learn how to use uh, the pencil panel um, and the sorry, the pencil tool and shapes and the appearance panel. So we're definitely going to try to impress as much as possible and to use Illustrator to edit photo in a creative way. Right, so uh, Louis, yes, cats, I love cats. I love all animals, to be honest. So, uh, but definitely I have two cats, Frida and Carlo, <laughs> which are in the house waiting for some dinner. But right, before we get started, um, hopefully everybody has downloaded their started file, which is supposed to look like this. Um, you will have a, a starter, a starting um, artboard. And also if we go back and uh, undo the trim view, you'll have uh, uh, the name of the challenge. So this is a scroll stopping photo. By the way, the artboard is a 1080 by 1080. This is the size of an Instagram. Um, uh, Luis Madrigal is saying she's Mexican Irish. Who is Mexican Irish? I'm curious. I want to know. <laughs> so um, go ahead and download the file if you haven't done so. And what I really wanted to do is to show you our Discord chat. So in order to get into Discord, all you have to do is to head on our landing page, which is behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. And from here, uh, we can click on the community chat or simply go ahead and check this out. You can use this link, which is uh, bit.ly slash AI discord so if you use this link you're going to be able to join our discord and if you don't know what is discord and if you have not been hanging out on discord yet uh, i'm going to show you a quick preview of what discord looks like you can have access on discord uh, on web on your desktop and also on your mobile discord is our wonderful server where we can chat we're going to submit your work also for having a review from all our amazing mentor we have team we have also paul trani in the chat today uh, in the Discord and all the amazing mentor like Randall, Rocky, Ryan and the community of 1,500 people live here with us today. Fantastic. So I'm going to show you at the end here how to show your work and you'll see you receive feedback. But this is also a great opportunity to network and get to know other professional or students and to just, you know, make more friends in this wonderful creative community. So join the Discord channel and share your work there and also on your uh, behance. But it's time to get started. As you can see here, we have plenty of uh, previous challenges that we've done in the previous days. And don't worry if you're just starting up today and today's your first challenge, that's completely fine. You can catch up at any time. Let's see real quick in the chat if there is uh, any other question before we get started. Kimberly has three cats, Bailey, Sadie and Lockie. <laughs> Oh, your cat, Louis, is Mexican Irish. Mercurial has three cats. And uh, and Louis' cat is April O'Neill. <laughs> April O'Neill. That's so funny. So we're all animal lovers and we all things we don't know how to draw. That's perfectly fine. Um, so where on Italy? Kingsley is asking, I guess that was uh, regarding my photo. I'm from the south of Italy, the very tip of the hill. But let's get started. Yes, the picture that was taken in the south of Italy, just in front of Greece. And that's where I'm from. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to bring in a photo inside of Illustrator. First of all, I will uh, uh, love to encourage you to create and work with different layers. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the new layers button here at the bottom of the layers panel in order to create a new layer. And we're going to call this layer images just to keep things organized. As you can see here, I have a bunch of layers that I've used before and, you know, we're just going to ignore that for now. So in order to place an image, we are going to use the wonderful shortcut Shift Command P. There will be Shift Control P if you're working on a Windows machine. And from here, all you have to do is to browse your machine in order to see where um, your photos are at. And that's an excellent question. I need to remember where did I actually place my images 
if we cannot find it here, here it is. I think that's it. It is in my downloads. So once you browse your images, make sure to click on link uh, also, and then we can click on place. Remember the shortcut to open the place document is shift command P if you're working on a Mac, there will be shift control P if you're working on a window machine and then click on place. And as you can see, the image will be loaded in your selector. All you have to do here is to click and drag in order to place your image and uh, it will be resized to whatever size you want. And uh, first of all, let's try and make this image a little bit more uh, add a little bit more contrast in the image. Uh, usually you can perform this sort of edits uh, with Illustrator or with Photoshop, but let me show you a very quick way to add contrast to any image inside, uh, sorry, in uh, Photoshop. But let's, let me show you how to do it in Illustrator. Um, let me see if there is uh, any question here in the chat. I can see Wade. Control shift seven and it worked the first time, but couldn't get it to work. Oh, yesterday. Yes. So Sony, yesterday we created a mask. I'm going to show you to create a mask and that's command seven. So it's not um, control shift. It's just command seven. I'm going to show you real quick just because I think that will be useful for everybody. So if I'm going to go ahead and click and select the rectangle tool and create a rectangle above the image to use the rectangle as a mask and frame our image, we're going to select them both make sure that the shape that you want to use as a mask sits on top. The image has to sit below, select them both and it's command seven. There will be control seven on windows, no shift. Control seven, command seven, depending which uh, machine you're using. Command, uh, sorry, command Z or control Z to undo. And we can uh, actually use this rectangle right now, which we have just uh, uh, created by selecting the rectangle tool from the toolbar. And by the way, if your toolbar looks different than mine, all you have to do is to click on the three dots here in order to edit the toolbar, head to the flyout menu at the very top and make sure that we select advanced. We're gonna have fun with the pencil tool, the smooth tool, so make sure to select advanced so you can definitely have a, a toolbar that looks exactly like mine while you're working, if you're looking to follow along or whenever you are deciding to uh, create the, your image. Right, so now that we have selected the rectangle tool, which you can also access with the by pressing the letter M on your keyboard, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag one of the corner of its bounding box in order to make it at least as big as um, uh, the size of the artboard. And then I'm going to go ahead and click double click on uh, the swatch panel for the fill and drag it to the black side and then click on OK, because I really wanted to add black. So what I'm going to do here is now head to the properties panel and under opacity, I'm going to set the blending mode to overlay. And look what happens. So it overlays the darker pixel. Overlay is part of the uh, darker blending mode. And basically what it does, it makes dark pixel darker. Uh, so it's just going to you know, make the image overall darker. We know that from many, many other streams that we watched in Illustrator, sorry, in Photoshop and Lightroom. Uh, but of course, this is quite dramatic. You can either go for a, a lighter color, maybe use a blue or a gray, or uh, simply just work on the opacity and just bring the opacity down a little bit, just like so, maybe to 50%. So we can see that before and after here. If I move it, if I actually move this rectangle, we can already see that we have already added contrast to our image. And we can also see the difference from the other side of the image, just like so. Now click and drag the image to position it to whatever you want, because then we're going to head to the layers panel and use the layers panel little lock icon in order to lock this layer. By doing so, we're going to preserve the editability. So we're going to go ahead and start drawing on it without any fear because the image is going to stay there nice and neat. And if you're not sure and if that seems confusing and you really just want to have a look at how the image looks like when it's trimmed, well, all you have to do is head under the view menu here and then choose trim view. This will allow you to just trim everything outside uh, the artboard and that is sitting on the pasteboard and really focus on the content or the artboard, which it will be your final output. So that's a really good way to preview your work. And again, click on view and untick trim view to go back and show everything that is there. So let me see if there is any other question in the chat. And let's see the front the shape in front can be in any color, it will disappear. 
Yes, exactly. When we create a mask, it doesn't matter if it was white, black or blue, because as we use it as a mask, it just becomes a frame for our photo. Fantastic. But let me know if there is uh, any other uh, question. Erin um, is also suggesting uh, that there is uh, um, the option under the object menu to make a clipping mask. There it is. And that's also where you can find a way to release a clipping mask. So thank you so much, Erin, for this lovely advice. Now I'm going to go ahead and create a new layer. And this is the layer where we're going to have a lot of fun. Now, before we were going, I will strongly recommend you to create uh, a color palette. Now, what I usually do, and you can see uh, right here first on, um, on this first layer, what I do is just pick some color, literally, uh, I'm going to bring those in just so I work consistently in the same layer, which we're going to name illustrations and then command F to paste. So literally what you do is again, create a rectangle like we did before, and then you can double click on it um, and sorry, just click on it. And then again, use the color picker to select any color you wish and then simply click on OK. And as you can see, the color will be applied uh, to your little shape. Now, once you have created, uh, you know, as many colors as you want, usually for design, I will say when we work on branding, three colors are fine. But in this case, you know, we're having fun. So as many colors as you want, then click and drag and select all of them, head under the window menu and uh, under uh, and then you can find your swatches panel over here. Make sure to uh, click on this little folder icon in order to create a new color group, which we're going to call it. I'm just going to call it Clarity Palette. Feel free to create your own. And as you can see, all the colors are now available to access and to use for our little shapes. And then we're going to press the letter N in order to access the pencil tool, which is also here on the toolbar and double click on it. And as you can see, we have the fidelity, which we're going to bring to smooth in order to make sure to start drawing with the help of Illustrator. And I'm going to start real quick here by creating the shape of an eye. So I'm literally uh, drawing freehand, as you can see. And then I'm going to go ahead and start to fill it with any color from our swatches. Then you can also use any of the shapes, like for example, the ellipse tool to create the center of the eye and then go back inside your swatches panel to create uh, to apply different colors. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the start tool and click and drag and use the top or bottom arrow to create diff to add more points to your star. And then again, you can apply whatever color you want and then press the letter V in order to access the transform tool. And I kind of wanted to distort it to create this little eyelash sort of feeling. And in just a few seconds, I'm going to press command shift left bracket uh, there will be control shift left bracket if you're working on window we already created the first little part of our animate our drawing which is the eye now in order to create a copy press command c and then command f to copy and paste in front and add to the properties panel to then uh, use the flip horizontally to just create a copy that looks the same but just sits on the opposite side so we already made our image super cool by adding the eyes but i wanted to show you how did i created the sun and we're going to also use uh, the um, appearance panel so let's go ahead and uh, click on the window menu and select appearance in order to bring the appearance panel up. Then uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and use the pencil tool and click and drag to create an arch. Then from the appearance panel, we can see here that we have access to the stroke color and the fill color. So what I'm going to do is to start by uh, selecting the stroke and adding a weight of uh, four millimeters and giving it a round cap. And also from here, we can access the a little preview of the swatches panel and we can add as many color as you want. But what I really want to show you here is the fact that we can add as many stroke, sorry, as many stroke as you want by clicking on the add new stroke icon underneath the appearance panel. So I'm going to go ahead and add a new stroke. And in this case, I'm just going to make it bigger and change its color uh, to pink. Remember, for the appearance panel, the same is valid as for the layers panel. Uh, every effect that is applied on top will display also on top of the content. So make sure to select the stroke and drag it underneath. Here it is. Sometimes is a, a little hard to select it. I think I never really got the 
There we go. So it's better if you do it from the side, just like so, and you bring it underneath. So I'm going to bring this stroke. Can you see the little blue line? They will tell you where it is. So I was uh, uh, clicking on the little arrow. Make sure to do it from the right. So click and drag the larger stroke underneath just like so and I'm probably going to make this also a little bit bigger so we can see it and you can keep going and add as many strokes as you want so in this case I'm going to make this even bigger and give it another color maybe use this red and as you can see we just have one single stroke but we actually created uh, this wonderful effect uh, with the stroke coming out from both sides and applying different color stroke to one single line. Then I'm going to select it and press the option key to create a copy. And then again, use uh, the shift key if you want to create a proportional re resize or just to, uh, if you just want to just free transform it because we're drawing freehand, just click and drag one of the corner of its bounding box. And that's going to work for our little sun here. I want to qu real quick show you how to create the little squiggly line for the uh, the uh, sun ray. I'm going to go ahead again, press the letter N to access the pencil tool, and I'm going to go ahead and create my first uh, little uh, squiggle ray for the, the sun. And I'm going to bring go back to the appearance and bring the uh, stroke a little bit back to like nine millimeters. And then I'm going to go ahead and select the width tool. And here, zooming in inside the stroke, we can change the, the, the width of the stroke at any point inside the stroke. So we can make uh, the bottom part larger and the, and the tip a little bit thinner, like, you know, actually a ray of sun. And then bring it back by using the control shift left bracket so we can also move it inside the sun now how can we quickly create more rays that go around without having to duplicate them well we have the rotate tool that comes in to help hold the shift key in order to set uh, the center of your rotation so there will be option on a mac alt on a windows and then you can as you can see we have a i'm going to zoom in for you to see it we have the little origin of the rotation sitting there then you can preview uh, the rotation here. Make sure that you tick on preview to see how far of how many degree you want to rotate it. And do not press OK. Just press copy because otherwise we're going to lose our first ray. Then to repeat, simply press Command D. That will be Control D if you're working on a window machine. And you can go ahead and create as many rays as you want. Now, I kind of like to um, sort of duplicate also the rays on the other side. So I will probably just, you know, uh, do something like that, just flip them on the other side. So it's not, it's kind of symmetric, but it also gives a little bit of movement to the illustration and you can go ahead and start to move them as much as you want. Now, the cool stuff about this uh, appearance panel is that the, we can change the colors at any point. So let's say that we want the sun to be actually, you know, orange instead of pink so we want to swap this color when well, that's not a problem they're always going to be editable at any point so even here if you wanted to change uh, this other color again we can just make these orange sorry this internal red and the outside orange just like so so we give it a little bit more of a contrast and you can do the same for your ray all the shift key in order to click and uh, add them in one selection and again from here under the appearance panel, we can just change their color to orange, just like so. I know we have a really like few minutes left, uh, but something that I wanted to show you is the, how we can use the mask clever in a clever way since we talk about it uh, today. I'm just gonna try to be super quick. I'm gonna go ahead to the image, unlock the layer, click and drag and uh, press Command G to group, group it because we have two shapes already. And then I'm gonna press Command C and Command F to paste in front. But in this case, I'm going to bring this group inside our illustrations. Uh, and now something else that I'm going to do here is to use a, a, the pen tool to create a little shape here. So I'm going to press P to uh, activate the pen tool. And I'm going to go ahead and just follow this line uh, for the C. So just, you know, very roughly, we're going to create this shape. 
then hold the shift and select the shape below. And again, command seven, control seven, like we did before. And as you can see, what I've done here is to create a mask using the pen tool that will allow us to cover part of this illustration. So for example, if I want the sea to go below or the sun to go behind the sea, all we do is simply creating a mask. And I'm gonna show you, um, I can lock the image here. So uh, the image doesn't move if we click on it, but we do have this little mask here, which is literally uh, a copy of our photo, but it goes and cover the area that we want to hide. Something uh, that uh, we can perhaps do uh, also real quick with our uh, pen tool is to create some little stars. And again, I want to show you this to everybody because again, you do not need to know how to draw in order to make uh, fun art and create a uh, cool shape. You know, you can do as many as you want, just like so, and then resize them and bring them around just to make a lot of uh, fun and add a lot of fun elements. Unfortunately, it's time to say goodbye. I cannot believe it how much the, the time goes fast here. Make sure to submit your work both on Behance and on Discord. Remember, this is the link in order to submit your work for Discord. And uh, we're going to be together tomorrow with another challenge. I hope you had fun and stay tuned for more Adobe Live here. Go and grab a glass of water. There is so much more fun coming. Thank you so much, everybody. I will see you soon. Bye.